What's going on, everyone? My name is Tino Farah, and welcome back to another episode of the NLL Flash. We are here to get you set and ready to go for week eight in the National Lacrosse League. And of course, recap a little bit of week seven. We will get to that momentarily. Of course, we got to have to tell you guys about our Flash game of the week. We didn't leave that up to a vote this time. We just made an executive decision, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we mentioned last week that there was just a ton of news, a ton of transactions coming down the wire, and looks like they just copied the same script as last week, and they did it again this week. So I'm going to go down the list here for everybody, uh, and at least just go through the notable ones. So let's start off on Monday. We're going to go in chronological order here. On Monday, Albany sent forward Tate Catoni to Philly, for a third round pick in the 2024 draft. Then let's fast forward a couple days over to Wednesday. This is the big one of the week, so try to keep up here. Callum Crawford moves from New York over to Panther City. In return, the Riptide get goaltender Kevin Orleman, who's been on the pup list so far all season, and, and we're not sure when he's going to return. At least it hasn't been stated so far. They also get forward Colton Lidstone, and defenseman Petey LaSala, uh, plus three draft picks. So a big haul coming in the way of New York in return for Callum Crawford going over to Panther City. This all coming just a week after Jake Fox also went over to Panther City from New York. So maybe there's a relationship building between those two teams. I guess we'll see as we progress here. And then the final one on the list here, Thursday, Albany trades defenseman Adam Bomberry, who's been on the holdout list. Uh, he gets traded over to Buffalo for forward Thomas Vason, who was on the practice roster. So those are all the, transa uh, the transactions that went down this week. Uh, I kind of like this trend. If it's going to continue, we'll see if we get a few more coming down the wire next week as well. But uh, that'll do it for all the moves so far. Okay, before we get to forward, talking about week number eight, we, of course, need to recap a an entire slate of games that went on in week seven. It was a crazy busy week. I hope you guys had your screens available. So before we get started too much talking into week eight, let's recap the week that was. Let's kick things off with our week seven flash game of the week, a rematch of the week six matchup between Halifax and Albany. We said last week that Albany is a team that gives Halifax troubles, and man, oh man, did that ever come to light in this game. Doug Jamison found his way back into the crease for the Firewolves. Between him and Warren Hill, this was a battle in both creases. Finally, after both teams refused to give an inch, we headed into overtime in front of those wild Thunderbirds fans. But Kieran McArdle spoiled the party. Who else? He leads the team with 18 points on the year, and he secured the bag. 11-10, your final. I bet you probably liked that previous game so much that you wished you could watch it all over again. Good news, the Colorado-Saskatchewan game was basically a carbon copy, shot for shot, save for save, and it took us to overtime, tied at 10 for the second time in the same night. This time, though, the home crowd had something to cheer about when Reese Dutch called game 11-10, your final. Calgary's recipe for success after a couple of disappointing weeks needed to be consistency with their offense, and it looked high-flying right off the bat. How about this for a little stat line? Josh Courier, in his first game since being acquired by the Roughnecks, scored on Calgary's first possession just 30 seconds in. Then, 14 seconds later, his brother and new teammate copies his work with one of his own. I don't know if there's a record or not for the fastest goals scored by a pair of brothers, but that's got to be it. Anyways, that led to Chris Riglieri coming into the game relatively early to settle things down, but it didn't matter for the Roughnecks. Once they grabbed that lead, they never gave it up again. and They would hang on to win this one 14-10. All right, and going down the remaining games from Week 7, Toronto took down Halifax in their second game of the weekend, 17-8. Panther City came back against Philly. That was a 12-10 final. Buffalo, another rematch from Week 6, took down Georgia, 11-9. In the highest-scoring game of the season so far, Vancouver's offense came to life, taking down Vegas, 19-16. And finally, the Sunday matinee, Rochester, took down New York by a final of 11-8. to 8. 
All right, like I mentioned before, this matchup for week eight was just too sweet. It was too perfect to leave this one up to chance. So that's the only reason we didn't put a poll this week to help determine the flash game of the week. Who else but the Buffalo Bandits, the 4-1 and one Buffalo Bandits, taking on the 5-0 and o Rochester Nighthawks in a battle for first place in the East. Can Rochester remain undefeated? Can Buffalo get one back in the win column. Can Connor Fields get a little bit of redemption? We'll see this Friday. So that game's coming on January 20th, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at Blue Cross Arena in Rochester. Okay, joining us for another episode here to help us preview the Flash Game of the Week. Uh, first time talking to him since he was helping us out with a bunch of our season previews. Mr. Aiden York of Lacrosse Flash. Aiden, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since before the season started. So, first of all, glad to see you're back in front of the shower curtain, as I'm sure everybody else is as well. But uh, how's the season been treating you so far? It's going really good. Uh, very, very good games. A lot of surprises. Uh, a lot of not so surprising things going on. Um, it's it's just great to see full stadiums again. Um, it's great to see great lacrosse happening in an uncertain season ahead of us, and I'm excited to see what the future brings. All right, so we are here to preview the Flash Game of the Week, like we mentioned before. It is Rochester taking on the Buffalo Bandits, and the Rochester Nighthawks coming into the season, myself included, the odds makers included, I don't think anybody was really giving these guys a chance. I don't think anybody could have predicted them being 5-0 and to this point. Um, and this is without a doubt, a huge matchup for them going up against Buffalo with an opportunity to take over a stranglehold here on first place in the East. So in your eyes, how has Rochester gotten here so far? Yeah, I, I talked about the surprises of the season so far and how it's super exciting, a, a super exciting part of the season so far. Um, Rochester coming out the gates five and zero. Oh, I don't know if anybody on the planet would have had that down. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I think they're just cohe They're a cohesive unit. Um, they're, they found their guy in net. So it looks like they have a future superstar in the pipes. Um, their offense is clicking. Um, Connor Fields is obviously out there slinging the rock around. Um, I wish I had a definitive answer for you for that question. Um, but I think they're just a good team. Great locker room. I'm sure they have, and, uh, they have a backbone in, in the pipes. I'm glad you mentioned Connor Fields there because he's the key to my next question. Um, it's it's safe to say, like you mentioned, he's one of the biggest contributors to this Rochester offense now that he's, you know, kind of the quarterback running the show there. He's on pace currently for 123 points. His previous high last season was 67. Um, is there something different that you're seeing in his game that's allowing him to be such a contributor on this Rochester offense? Or is it just he's sort of the quarterback now? Put it shortly, I don't think there's anything different about his game other than confidence. Um, you look at last year with Buffalo, I think he got a really good chance to play with some really, really good players in a really good system. Um, obviously, with playing with Josh Byrne, you're going to learn a lot. Playing with Dane Smith, you're going to learn even more. Um, I think a lot of it was him just trusting his shot, trusting his plays, trusting his passes, um, and just trusting the entire process. Um, obviously now he comes in, he's no longer a, a young up and coming guy. He's played enough years to be considered a veteran. Um, and now he's kind of, you know, leading, leading the rope. Uh, and you have Ryan Smith with him on his flank. And, um, I think it's just coming down to confidence and finally finding a stride. And I'm excited to see what he can do because if he can put up 123 or even double his previous career high, I think we're going to be talking about him for a long time with Rochester as, as a superstar in this league. All right, so Aiden, you are our goalie guru here, so I want to move on to the goaltending. And Rylan Hartley, you already mentioned him earlier. It, it just plays one of the most obscure styles that I think anybody's seen. He, he's kind of like the NLL's version of Dominic Hasek in the way that he plays, um, especially in comparison to Matt Vince as well, who's widely considered to be one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. But what do you like about this goaltending matchup? What do you see when you see these two goaltenders uh, staring down at each other? The biggest thing I see is the potential of a legacy game for Rylan Hartley. Um, and what I mean by that is you have the GOAT 
at the other end of the end of the floor looking you right in the eyes, and it's your chance to kind of grab the reins and go, you know what, this is my league now. This is my net. Everyone's going to be talking about me. I'm going to get the rings that you have. Um, in terms of style, yeah, I, he's a ball tracker, and he reacts well, and I think that's very, very promising. If you have a goalie that can see the ball and has the size and flexibility that Ryland has, he's going to – Gonna do really, really good things for you. He's gonna steal you some games. Um, and Vino at the other end, uh, name a goalie that plays deeper in his net and succeeds. You can't. And his style is so unique, and I think that's what makes him so good. Um, I, I want to see Ryland take, take it. I, I would love to see him overcome Vino. Not that it makes him better, but I think that'll prove to himself that you know I can, I can play with the big dogs. I can shut down Dane Smith. I can do what Vino's done and, and you know, follow the same footsteps that he did, Vino being a pathfinder himself and from a young up-and-coming goalie to the goalie everyone wants to be. Um, yeah, this matchup's an exciting one. Uh, I hope I hope it's a defensive gem that uh, our own Ty Merrow would appreciate. Um, and a little cool bet, cool bet shout-out. Um, maybe bet the under. See what happens. All right, last one here for you, Ado. I, I want to ask you the same question, but for either team. Just straight up, what does Buffalo have to do to be successful this weekend against Rochester? And secondly, what does Rochester have to do to be successful against Buffalo? I think Buffalo needs to stick to their system. Um, Rochester is a great team. They're going to have each other's backs. They're going to go into every battle. They're going to ride the highs and the lows. And, you know, they're riding a high right now. Uh, For Buffalo, they're a seasoned team. They've been there, done that, except win it. Sorry. But... um, you know, they're going to walk the walk. Everyone knows that. We know where the ball is going. We know what where the plays are going to go through. Um, the issue is talent, and I think Buffalo is just going to trust their talent, trust their process. Uh, for Rochester, I think if I'm a coach for Rochester, I say let everyone but Dane beat us and just shut down Dane and, and you know, trust your goalie's going to make a save like he has all year. He's, he's super confident right now. Obviously, you worry about Josh Byrne, but, you know, you got to pick your poison. Um, and just keep playing like a unit and just trust that your offense can get it done when you're on defense and on defense, you trust your offense can get one for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Aiden, thank you very much for all your insights here. Again, that game is going to be Friday evening. That's at 4 30 PM Pacific, 7 30 Eastern at blue cross arena in Rochester. You can catch all of Aiden's work on the cross flash, specifically his goaltending specific article, peculiar, peculiarities in the crease i'm always going to butcher that word my in mistake. the pipes in the pipes my mistake uh what a what a loser anyways uh ado thank you so much for joining us for another episode here and enjoy the games this weekend thank you tino you too all right thanks again to aiden york for joining us for another episode of nll flash here let's just quickly roll down the remaining games of week eight it's a it's a short week only four games in total so we got three more games to tell you about here The other game on Friday, Vancouver makes a trip down to Vegas to rematch the Desert Dogs. That one's coming in 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern at Michelob Ultra Arena. Then let's move over to Saturday and keep this one in mind because this game time did get changed. This is Toronto versus Philly in Philly. Uh, It got changed to 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. That's at the Wells Fargo Center. And wrapping up the weekend, the Riptide head into Albany. New York still looking for their first win of the season as well. That one's at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at MVP Arena in Albany. All right, that's going to do it for all of us here at the NLL Flash. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode here, previewing week number eight. Another huge thank you to Aiden York for joining us for this episode and huge thank you to our entire crew here at Flash that helps put on this entire production. So on behalf of Aiden, myself, and our entire crew here at Lacrosse Flash, thanks for joining us for another episode. We'll see you next time.